pockets. Sneezing your shirt so the snot goes all down in there. How y'all doing this morning? morning. We're all here. We got to get to singing so everybody else will show up, huh? I I had one of those mornings this morning where where you got to go, she's right, Roy. You know what I'm saying? You've been married long enough. You, You realize she's right a lot more than you hate to admit sometimes, huh? My wife's been saying, honey, you need to be stepping on that scale. I think you've been putting on some weight. In a loving way, of course. And I've been saying, no, I'm, I'm the same I've been forever. She said, no, I think you need to, that tummy's growing. <laughs> so this morning I actually got on the scale, and you know what? She was totally right. I have jumped up. So guess who's going on a diet this week? <laughs> <laughs> you ask me. Don't be afraid to ask me. Pastor, are you, all, all a diet is just controlling what's going in, right? <laughs> controlling what's going in and doing more walk as Mike Severson holds up his donut, right? <laughs> so praise God. You know what? If you see pastor's tummy getting smaller, just say, hey, his wife was right, and he needs to listen to her. How many know God gives us wives or husbands to help? Amen. And we need to listen. I do. So, Father, thank you that you love us even if we've gained 10 pounds. You love us if we've lost 10 pounds. You're faithful. You love us. Agape. Unconditionally, you love us. And, Father, we just thank you that we can rest in that. Dirty, clean, tall, short, fat, skinny. You love us. And, Lord, today we just want to give some love back. I had the blessing as your parent or an aunt or an uncle, you can relate to this. My son came over. I don't get to see him enough. He works in Portland. He's got two babies and a lovely wife and they're living life and I don't see him enough. But he was near the area and he came by and brought one of my grandbaby girls Little Stevie, she's like three and already like almost as tall as Molly. Crazy how mom and dad are both tall. Joni's like six foot and Jason's six foot, so they're, they got tall kids. But just to be there and love her and, and it, you know, I mean, not that I didn't want to see my son, but the grandbaby, right, you know. So we just had such a great time. And I remember as I sat there thinking, wow, it just kind of came my daddy loves to fellowship with me that way. How many have a chance in this busy life? You, you, you set aside some time to be with the Lord and you just feel that daddy thing, man. You hear me? That love. Well, I want you to know that your daddy right now loves the fact that you took the time to be here today. You got up. Even though you didn't feel like it, or Danielle, you were fighting three or four little babies, right? Getting yourself. Yeah, that word fighting's right, huh? Right? Real close. Dealing with life. But instead of, you know, going back to bed or just whatever, you chose to come and be here, Linda. I want you to know that he appreciates that. And I do too. Hey. It'd be kind of rough to be up here having church with nobody here, right? You guys chose to come and be part of this fellowship today. And I want you to know your daddy appreciates it, and I appreciate it. Amen? We all appreciate it. Amen. Also, I want you to know that he's concerned about what you're dealing with right now. I got, man, many calls. Pastor, well, Pastor Hahnemann. Is over in Avamir, and he's one of my heroes. He's the one that helped me to find my call. How many know the Bible says that there are brothers in the body that can help us find our call? Paul told Timothy, hey, you remember that call that you received as we prayed with you and laid hands on you? Hey, you need to get to doing that. Stir it up. Get back to work, right? 
hey, there are people that help us to find our call. And he helped me to find my call. And he's in Avamir, and he's dealing with some real tough stuff. And I was there to be with him. And every time I go there, Roy, to encourage him, I leave there encouraged. Amen? God's so faithful. Lift up Pastor Hahnemann. Also, Betty's not here today, and Betty's not here today. And Roy said, hey, please lift up my wife. Baby Ozzy, am I saying it right? Was promoted last night, yesterday evening, to heaven. Or this morning, early this morning. Oh, last night, last night. Now, that's Steve's, I don't know how you say it, but... Great nephew, that's it, your sister's grandson. And he went to be with Jesus. And it's sad, but it's awesome. What I mean is that baby's suffering is over. His time of trouble is gone. He's with our Lord and God. Amen? But the family's dealing with some tough stuff, so let's lift them to Jesus. Andrew was supposed to lead worship this morning, and we got a message yesterday that his mama had a heart attack and she's in Portland. She's a fragile diabetic. Let's lift them in prayer. Amen? Many, many, many. My mama's not here today and I know she's having some horrible pain in one of her legs. Also Sue and Michelle. Not this Michelle, although she's not here either, so let's lift her. Talking about my sissy Michelle in Washington. Anybody else? If you'd like to be prayed for physically, we'd gladly lay hands on you, anoint you. If you just want to raise a hand, come on, this is the time, y'all, when we want to pray with you and for you. Brother Joe, anybody else? Come on, all this body, we all. Hey, Brother Kevin, would somebody, come on, Michael Severson, somebody, come forward, lay hands on your brother, would you? Somebody get Joe. Anybody else? This sweet little lady, would you mind, Kelly, praying for her? Our God's faithful. Lord, right now, we lift these needs before you, each and every one. We might not be fully aware of all that's going on, Lord. We also pray for our sister's shoulder right now, Lord. But you are. You know exactly what's going on, the Bible says, before we even ask. But we ask, Lord. We ask for your intervention. We ask you, Lord, for divine touch, body, mind, and spirit, God. We know, Lord, you're faithful. You're faithful. And that you've already made provision. The Bible says beyond what we can even ask or think, you know exactly what we need. A lot of us have things we want, but you know what we need, Lord God. And we pray, Lord, that what the enemy is trying to use to destroy Instead, Lord, you would use to bring forth glory, to shape us, to change us. We pray, Lord, for a healing body, mind, and spirit, a touch. Thank you, God, that you hear and you answer in the precious name of Jesus. And we all agree by saying, amen. I got to, don't want to use the word brag, but... As a pastor, there are things that bring me joy, and there are things that bring me a lot of joy. And this morning, um, Danette, she said, Pastor, Vicki and I went out tracking yesterday, and she said, I was able to talk to three or four people myself. Let's give him a clap for that. Isn't that awesome? You know, we buy a thousand tracks at a time, and they just go bye-bye, and they're ending up someplace. How many know our God is more than willing and able, and if we will put forth the effort, he'll use us, and his word does not come back void. Amen? Amen. It won't come back void. Hey, if you're not doing anything else, hey, can you do this? Hey, did you get one of these? Abby can do it. She's done it a bunch. Amen? Did you get one of these? My grandbabies do it a lot. I say, hey, on this trip, we're going to pass out 50 tracks. You're going to help me. Ten a day. Okay. Okay, Grandpa. Vivi, go, to, go give this to him. And if he tries to give it back, just turn and walk away. Just, just hand it to him. Say, did you get one of these? In fact, she doesn't even say anything a lot of times. She just walks up like this, and they take it from her because she's just cute. <laughs> hey, that's how we train them. 
That's how we raise them up. Amen? 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 God's so faithful. Does anybody have a testimony they'd like to share of what's... Come on, sissy. Now, this lady's having a hard time just sleeping because her shoulder's hurting her so bad. And she's going to come up and tell us about what God's doing. Amen? Amen? Okay, Hold this week, um, my, my brother lost his best friend. Um, he passed away in his arms, and he called me to come and rescue him and comfort him. And um, so I did, 9 o'clock at night, go and comfort my brother. But in the meantime, um, his best friend's brother was there, and I was able to pray with my brother and his brother. So, um, and my brother's not very good. Um, he, he doesn't believe in stuff, but... He still let me pray with him, and um, his friend's brother isn't much of a, a, a believer either. I mean, and so to be able to pray with him was like a God's blessing. Praise God. Praise God. Hey, you know, I have people that call him, Pastor, this person doing this, and this person's doing that. And I say, hey, sin or sin, right? What I'm saying is, what's the world going to do? It's going to do stuff we, it shouldn't be doing. And often, brothers and sisters of the Lord do the same. But when we have an opportunity to go there and light up the darkness, praise the Lord. Anybody else? Come on. Oh. Hey, this isn't really a testimony, but I would like all the kids that are in school or homeschooled and anybody that works in the school district to come up here. Is I really I believe that we need to end and um, the Christian school too. Um, we are needing prayer because, as many of you know, the school district, especially the public one, is getting more secular every year. And I just want prayer for um, that will be light in the darkness, and that people will see that we're different. And David needs to come up, too, because he works at the high school. That's a big one. And you need to get up here, too, because you're still in school. Where's so Mary? get up here. Where's Mary? Yep. Where's Mary? And then Lori on, Mary. and Robert are bus drivers. I want them up here, come too. Come on, Lori and Robert. We need prayer. We need come prayer on. for this whole school year, that the Lord Good will job. just protect us, give us opportunity to shine the light. And David's got a very unique job where he can talk to kids that are having a really rough time. He deals with some naughty kids, and Mary, too. Um, we all work in the school district, so I just want you guys to keep us in prayer all throughout the year. You're a teacher, too. Get up here. Yep. Yeah, she homeschools. That's hard. And, yeah, and so does Danielle. So let's just bathe these guys in prayer um, for this, this school year. And, Rick, I'm going to let you have the mic. Oh, wow. Well, I need prayer, too. <laughs> Father, right now, we just band together. You tell us, Lord, that if any two or three come together in agreement, that you will hear and you'll answer, Lord. You tell us you're in the midst. You tell us, Father, that you are a God that wants to bring forth your will. But it says that my people who are called by my name need to humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn. So, Lord, help us, first and foremost, to be examples. Help us, Lord, to shine your light every place we go. Give us your wisdom. Give us your clarity. Help us, Lord God, to speak your truth and love. We lift up the leaders of this community, the fire, Lord, department, the police department, the schools, Lord, the leaders of administration throughout this city, this country, this state, Lord. Father, change us at the core. Put up whom you will and take down whom you will, Lord. And help us, Father, to be led by your precious Holy Spirit each and every day. Give us strength, wisdom, and clarity. In the name of Jesus, we all agree by saying, Amen. Amen. All right. Check, check. I got excited this week. I got an email from a fellow teacher at the high school telling my wife and I, or inviting my wife and I, on Tuesday mornings at 6.45 a.m., we meet in a teacher's room and we pray for our school. So, you know what? One, the teacher, when I talked to him about it this week, and he's just like, 
we're going to start having some things happen in this school. He's all pumped and he's all jazzed, and I'm excited about it because, you know, I get to cruise the halls all day long and pray for these kids throughout the day, and it's just going to be, we just got to slowly see things happen, you know. All right, yes, I'm excited. All right, we got some things happening. First thing that's happening, we are starting back up this Wednesday with adult Bible study at Pastor Rick and Molly's house at 6.30 to 8 o'clock. My wife will keep in contact. Ladies, there might be Bible study this Tuesday. I'm not sure. Uh, she's also doing online schooling and getting her teaching degree, so it's, uh, she's busy. So, but she'll get that started up here real soon again, ladies. So, but if it's this Tuesday, you'll know because she'll send you a message. Also, coming up this Saturday, how many people, anybody got anything going on Saturday? Raise your hand. Everybody raise your hand. We have family game night this Saturday. Five o'clock. We're going to meet in here. We're going to have some fun. Bring, bring your favorite board games. Bring snacks. Some beverages. And we're going to have some fun times playing some games. Whatever it may be. I might bring a frozen turkey and some two liters and do frozen turkey bowl. I don't know. It, it's anything could happen Saturday game wise. Don't look so excited, Dylan. Dylan's just like... I'm not awake yet, but, <laughs> but uh, anyway, we are going to have some fun Saturday, just fellowshipping and hanging out and, and just being as a church family with one another, playing some games. And Friday night, we have adult fellowship. You got any jazzy name yet? The Sotoville, the Sotoville Adults Fellowship. At, what time is it at? 6.30. Hey, there you go. Read the board. There we go. <laughs> anyway, that's happening Friday night, and then we're having our game thing Saturday at 5 o'clock to 7. So be a part of that. Also, coming up on September 24th, if you haven't talked to Pastor Rick or me yet, uh, on the 24th, we're giving you opportunity as a congregation. We have one to share at a, as what God's been laying on your heart. We give you like 10, 15 minutes. Sometimes if you're long-winded, you go, you go 20 you know, for we only have, Pastor Rick's like, no, we'll just stop worship early if you've really got something good. You know what I'm saying? We're going to let God speak. But anyway, mini sermonettes, we want to give you opportunity to share what God's been laying on your heart uh, and share with us as a, you know, a body. So that's happening on September 24th. Also, Women's Teen Challenge is coming up on October 22nd. We also are having a potluck that Sunday. So be praying about what God has laid on your heart to donate to this ministry. They're going to come to us. They're going to share where God, what God has brought them out of. And some of these ladies, it is just some devastating stuff that they've gone through. Drugs, alcohol, rape, multiple things. You don't know what it is that they've gone through. But they're going to share what God has brought them out of and where they're at now and what God is doing for them in the future. So be praying about what you, uh, God lays in your heart to donate to that ministry. Also, guys, we got on September or November 2nd through the 4th. That's coming up real soon. Start thinking about your 50 bucks. Start thinking, you know, getting days off at work because we have men's retreat happening. It's a Thursday, Friday, Thursday night, Friday, and a Saturday. So anyway, that's coming up. If you can't go, please talk to Pastor Rick and myself. We want to make sure that you get there and get go to get to go uh, because it's awesome. We, we feed you. 50 bucks is great for, you know, three days, two nights, because you get lots of food. We always have lots of food. There's, I don't think there's been a time that we've been out of food, and we're not so full that we're just, like, almost falling asleep. Pastor Rick, during our, our sessions, has to, like, throw something at somebody or say, hey, wake up, you know, <laughs> because we eat a lot. But we also get spiritually fed, and we also pray for one another, and it's a great time to bond as men of our church. And that's happening. And that is all I have Right now, ushers, come on forward to give you opportunity to give in the offering this morning. Brother Ron, would you pray over our offering this morning? Amen. If you notice, Ron was doing scriptural prayer. He was, he was watching and praying as he was walking up. <laughs> Boy, speaking of listening to your lovely lady or your spouse, uh, at about 7.20 last night, I was kind of dragging a little bit. It's been, you know, one of those days. And again, Kevin, my wife saw me went and get a cup of a tea 
All right. Uh, actually, a glass. No, I said I went and got a glass of tea, Brother Steve. And she said, you shouldn't be drinking that. You're going to be up half the night. I said, I'll be fine. One thirty last night, Roy, I was like, oh, I need to take that spot off the roof. That thing's going to ugly. <laughs> I didn't listen. <laughs> but I should, right? Because God gave me this lovely lady, at least in part, to grow me grow patience in me, <laughs> but also to help me, amen? She's in help meet, amen? And that doesn't mean she's less than. In fact, in many ways, she's greater than. How many know all through the Bible, God take, talked to the female often before, hey, Mary got the word before Joseph. He was going to divorce her. He was a nice guy. He was going to do it in a way that wouldn't, you know, get her killed. Because back then, adultery was a stony offense. He was going to do it. In a, and the Lord said, hey, that's my kid, Joseph. Right? Often the lady hears first. And we need to listen. Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you love to give us help. That you use others around us often to do that. Help us to be sensitive to your word today. Help me to speak it, Lord, and be faithful to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, I want Michael to put a scripture up real quick, Hebrews 10, 26, and 27. And the only reason I want us to see this is often you hear me pray, and what I say is, Lord, what the enemy's trying to use to destroy, help it instead, Lord, to help me to see or to bring your glory to change me if I'm messed up. Paul said, hey, these guys are willfully doing wrong. And we've told them over and over and over as Christians. And they keep living in an ungodly way. Turn them over to Satan that their body might be destroyed, that their soul might be saved. Man, that sounds contradictory. God's a healing God. He is. But how many know that Jesus said, hey, you're all concerned about your body getting beat or killed. What you really need to be concerned about is the fact that your father can send your soul to hell for all eternity, your spirit. Amen? Please don't misunderstand me. God heals and delivers, and that's his desire. But the Bible says if we're believers and we keep living wrong, if you deliberately keep on sinning, after we've received the knowledge of the truth, we understand it's wrong. No sacrifice for sin is left. Instead, what you're headed towards is judgment. And if you don't watch out, eternity in hell. This is what I want us to understand. Often, people that are believers make a decision to do something that's ungodly. Let's say they take somebody in and start living in sin. They know better, but they do it anyway. And the Holy Spirit keeps dealing with their heart, and they do it anyway. And what ends up happening is horrible judgment starts to come into their lives. Listen. And then we start praying, Lord God, heal them. Lord God, deliver them. Lord God, they're going through this horrible thing. When it's the very thing that's getting their attention. Am I making sense? And that's why it's so important that we need to learn to pray correct in line with the Holy Spirit. Yes, he wants to heal even when we get off the track and judgment's coming or the enemy's attacking because we've given him place. Amen? You understand what I'm saying? But what he wants is the total healing. He wants us to stop and repent and turn. Because, hey, how many know if I started doing horrible, ungodly sins and I knew better and God's judgment came towards me and he healed my body that was dealing with a bunch of junk or he healed my finances that it went totally south because of my decisions, but my spirit was still continuing to do ungodliness, I'd end up in hell. Is that our God? Is that his desire? No. He wants us to be healed. But first and foremost, he wants us to do what's right and repent. Amen? You hear me? So if you keep experiencing the judgment of God 
in your life, but the Holy Spirit has put a finger on something that's going on in your life that you know is wrong and you continue to do it. Listen, obey, and the deliverance will come. Am I making sense? Because what kind of a father would I be if I loved my son or my daughter and I said, do not go past that line there. If you do, there's going to be problems. And if you keep it up, there's going to be real problems. And they went and disobeyed me. And I didn't do what I said. Amen? I would be a liar and I'd be unjust and I'd be wrong. In fact, I wouldn't even be loving. Amen? Am I making sense? All right. Thank you again, Father, for all you're doing. And I pray you bless that mini sermon wherever it was supposed to go. So we're going to continue the series we started a couple weeks ago called How to Finish Well. In order to finish well, whatever you're doing, uh, it's careful that you don't stumble. We need to avoid stumbling. Whether you're building something, you're up on a ladder, amen? The word there in the Greek means to fall, to literally get off in the ditch, off the track, to backslide. I'm not just talking about messing up a little bit. I'm talking about getting sidetracked, off in the willies, falling away, amen? But we're not being obedient. We're being disobedient. We're not moving forward as we should be. So we've been talking about this, and I made a statement that God doesn't want us to stumble. God doesn't want us to backslide. So many people make statements like, oh, as the Lord wills. God doesn't want you to backslide. In fact, the Bible in many places gives us instruction. So that we won't backslide. And this is a great example we've been teaching through. 2 Peter 1, 1 to 4. Let's start by reading verse 1. Simon Peter, a bondservant, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He's talking to Christians. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. This is divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Wow. How? Through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Father God... Through Peter, that's why it was all blurry. I forgot. I got to have these. Father God, through Peter and the divine inspiration of the Holy Spirit, told us in this scripture that through knowledge of God, it literally is through intimate relationship with God, grace and peace can be multiplied in our lives, and we can tap into exceedingly great and precious promises that will help us to become partakers of his divine nature and escape the corruption that is in the world through lust. The word nature there literally means what comes naturally. You and I are flesh-driven, but God has given us the ability if we will be led by the Holy Spirit and obey and follow the directions and instructions he's going to give us as we walk through this, where you and I can literally be changed so that what comes naturally, instead of the fleshly desires that want to always lead us into corruption and wrong, what will start to come naturally in us are godly things. How many know that's great? I don't know about you, but I want that in my life. And, and God's bringing it forth every day in my life. 1 Peter 1, starting with verse 5. Let's continue. But also for this very reason, because of what we talked about and what we're going to talk about, giving all diligence. Check the word diligence out. That's talking about going after something with everything you have. Add to your faith virtue. To your virtue, knowledge. To your knowledge, self-control. The self-control, perseverance. To perseverance, godliness. To godliness, brotherly kindness. 
and to brotherly kindness and love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted, even to blindness, and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. And then what does it say? For if you do these things, you're going to fall a lot. You're going to backslide often. Is that what it says? It says, you will, everybody say that word, never stumble. How many know God's word's true? You'll never stumble. And it goes on to say, not only that, when you actually enter into the kingdom on that day, there'll be a huge and amazing thing going on. Because of how you've lived your life. You'll be welcomed with a joyous parade. It literally talks about in the Greek. That's pretty amazing. I don't know about you, but that sounds like something I'm going to do. Amen? This text again tells us that we can be fruitful in our knowledge of God and instructs us how. Praise God. If we will do these things and make our call and election sure, it literally means take ownership of, figure out and walk in what he's called and elected Mike Severs and Rick Pruitt, Joe, Jessica to do. That takes time, effort, seeking him, diligence. Amen. But we can find what he wants us to do and be assured of it. If we will do that, if we will do that, we will never stumble. We talked about the fact that we've all been given a portion or a seed of faith. That is what the Bible says. And that our faith is activated by hearing God's word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. It's activated. And then you and I can choose to move forward and put our faith into action and it will grow. 2 Peter 1.5 tells us to give all diligence and add to our faith virtue. We mentioned the, the Greek word there for add. And we said that it was a lot like what a choir director does. See, a bass voice alone doesn't make a choir. If you take the bass voice, you have to add a tenor. You have to add an alto. You have to add a soprano. And they begin to work in harmony, and that forms a choir. Amen? In the same way, uh, let me give you another example. It's, it's also similar to the word that you see a baker does. I have a recipe called Big Daddy Biscuits. And they're amazing biscuits. But in order to make them, there's a bunch of ingredients that have to be added together. They have to be mixed all up. Amen. You need the flour. You need the lard. You need the, the baking soda and many other. There's some secret spices I add. But if I told you those, I'd have to kill you because they're <laughs> secret. <laughs> but I'm saying you have to add those things together and then you have to bake it at a certain temperature in order for it to be that perfect biscuit. If I told my kids that I was making Big Daddy biscuits and gravy and then they sat at the table, Roy, and I just took some flour and threw it out on the table and said, dig in. They'd look at me like, what? But often that's how we live our Christian lives and then we wonder why it's not working. Amen? He has a bunch of attributes. And he says, if you will learn to walk these out in harmony, they all work together in harmony, then you'll quit stumbling the way you keep stumbling. Am I making sense? We need to learn how. He wants to make us into a, an amazing Big Daddy Biscuit. <laughs> but we need the Lord. We need the Lord. So we're to add to our faith virtue, which is courage, moral excellence. And we're told to add knowledge, 
the willingness to seek and know God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit through prayer and study and application of his word. We're also told to add self-control, which means to have dominion over ourselves, to take grip of oneself by his power. I shared with you, D.L. Moody said, I never met a man that gave me as much trouble as myself. Amen? And we're to add to self-control perseverance, which is the patience, steadfastness, under pressure, and the fortitude. It's about not quitting, not losing faith, holding on until the answer comes. And we're to add to perseverance godliness, which is a, 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 a reverence and respect for God and his word. The short definition of godliness is godlikeness. We're to be a reflection of the attributes of our Father in word, in thought, and in deed. Amen. So, can we see how all these work together to make a great biscuit? <laughs> Amen? Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Imagine that someone had tremendous faith and courage, but they lacked self-control. There'd be problems, right? There'd be problems. If they had perseverance and self-control, but they lacked faith and courage, they wouldn't be all that Father wants or desires for them to be. If you get a chance, take some time and go back through the last couple of messages. You can go to our Facebook channel. Some of you are probably watching on Facebook right now or the YouTube channel. You literally just go to your browser on your phone or, and just type in New Beginnings Fellowship Facebook Lebanon and you'll find it. And then click on the videos and you can find last week and the weeks before. They go hand in hand. If you go to YouTube, just go New Beginnings Fellowship Lebanon. There's a black and white circle. It's our whatever you call it, and you click on that and then go to videos or live and there's, you'll find it. I want to encourage you to go check it out. So this morning we're going to finish this series, Lord willing, and we're going to talk about the last two ingredients of the recipe. Brotherly kindness and love. Sometimes people read these two, and I know myself, for a long time it kind of confused me because they seem very similar. If you look up brotherly kindness, a lot of times it just says loving. And if you look up love, it says love. So you go, aren't you talking about the same thing? No. Let me explain. As a pastor, I've done a lot of premarital counseling, even with people in this church. And one of the things we talk about is the three loves that are involved in a relationship between a man and a wife. There's two loves of these three we're going to talk about that are important that we have between all relationships in us. The first one, just really quick, like is eros. And it literally means that sexual love, that desire that a man and a woman have for each other. Amen? I didn't say Ben and Steve. I said a man and a woman. I want to make that clear. It's the attraction we have. And listen, it's important that Molly and I keep that attraction there if you start to get a gut and your lady says you're not looking very attractive right now i need to listen don't i and i am because she has okay and it goes both ways i've told her hey, you get a little too you know? and she listens and we are honest with each other you know why because i found if i don't share what's really bugging me inside how many know that it comes to a head one way or another eventually but if I'm honest with her in a loving way, amen, it's important that man and wife keep that physical attraction. That means I need to try to look nice for her. Uh, if I get up in the morning and just look like a slob every day, every day, amen, that's not okay. That's not how I acted when we were dating. Man, I'd comb that hair five times, put on the best shirt, make sure I took a shower for the first time in four days, right, as a contract. I'm teasing. <laughs> I'm saying... I tried to look good for her. It's important that we continue that in our relationship. The second love that's important is literally Philadelphia. It's a Greek word. It means, just like the city, the city of brotherly kindness or brotherly love. Now, let me explain the difference. This is the effort that's put forth to maintain relationship, communion, fellowship. 
In other words, Molly and I take off and we go have fun together. We have tried and worked at it to find things that we have in common. Example, we love going RVing. Now, we glam camp. We just bought a new diesel pusher. Not new, new to us. For a fraction of what they cost. And we're selling our other one because we couldn't pull Becca's van. With the other one, because we need 10,000 pounds, and that one only could pull about five. We would have pulled the guts out of it. We love to go glam camping. Her and I do. We love it together. Also, Becca loves it, and our family loves it. So it's something we have found as an example, but we have worked at it. Amen? It's about coming together in harmony and fellowship and striving to grow relationships and maintain that community and communion. That's Philadelphia. The third love we're going to talk about in a minute. So right now, we're talking about brotherly kindness. And it is the desire to maintain communion and build relationship and fellowship with each other. Now, it takes both of us working at it. But pastor, I'm alone. Then find somebody to have communion with. I'm talking about a good Christian brother or sister in the church. But I've tried. Keep trying. Keep trying. Because it's part of how we grow. Yeah, I get most of mine right here, I'll be honest. But I also get it through all of you. But I'm called to be a father and a husband and a granddaddy. And I got eight grandkids and six kids. And trust me. That's a full-time, full-time, full-time job. You understand what I'm saying? Just doing that every day, right? Doing that every day. I love you, but we need to fellowship amongst each other. That's why I love stuff like Vicky has reached out and formed a bond with Danette. And they have grown into a fellowship. Amen? And that's how we do it. That's how we do it. It's so important. He said it's something that needs to be going on in our lives. It's, it's part of how we grow and don't stumble. How many know if you come to church and you find somebody that becomes a really good friend that's part of the church, the odds of you walking out or disfellowshipping is probably thinner? Amen? Just makes sense. So we need to strive to make relationships and to grow in those encounters. And this is using that word. John 13, 35 says, by this all will know that you are disciples. Because they're going to see the love you have one for another. They're going to see the brotherly kindness. I also want us to realize something. We cannot practice brotherly love or brotherly kindness if we isolate ourselves from the rest of the body. The enemy started with COVID in many ways, and it tried to get people away from fellowship, coming together. But the Bible says as things get worse and worse, we need to make sure not to forsake brotherly kindness. Coming together in fellowship, working together in harmony, building relationships with each other. So if the enemy's trying to get you to stay home because you don't feel like being there today, just realize it's a test. Are you going to pass or are you going to fail? It's one of the things we're called to do. Come together. But it's a burden sometimes. Yeah, so is being loving to people that are being horrible. But we're still called to do it. Amen? Why do we think because it's tough it can't be God? In fact, what we're going to see is most of the time it's the opposite. When it's tough, that's a sure sign it is of God. It is what we're called to do. Am I making sense? If the enemy's trying to get you not to come to fellowship, you just tell him to get off. Because he's a liar. And it's what we're called to do. It's what we were called to do in the Old Testament. It's what we're called to do now. We're called to come together. We all have gifts. We all have things. And if it's not going on in this hour and a half, and you think that means the church isn't functioning, you're looking at it wrong. It's Joe's job to reach out to Steve and form a relationship. It's Rick's job to reach out and form relationships. It's Johnny's job. It doesn't just happen in this hour and a half. It's everyday life. It's somebody reaching out to Kevin or vice versa. It's us forming relationships 
and then building on them and keeping them alive. Amen. Am I making sense? Okay, and it's part of what will keep us from backsliding. I've talked to many people that have went back to the world, and you know what they've told me? The church is less friendly than my old buddies at the bar. Every day it's our choice. Pastor, you're not preaching like everybody else. I don't care. That's what it says, and I'm telling you that's what it says. It's our choice every day to live in philia. Every day. Over and over and over, the Bible talks about this. So many scriptures. Look at Ephesians 4.32. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Romans 12.10. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love, in honor giving preference to one another. Ephesians 4.16. Am I going too fast for you scripture guys? I'm sorry. From whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, cause growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Look at the first part, joined and knit together. In order to have a joint, you've got to have two things that come together and they form a bond. But Listen. If you don't feel very welcomed here or like there's relationships, start reaching out and keep reaching out. Remember, we studied perseverance until you form a bond and then try to form another one and then try to form another. But pastor, that takes a lot of work. It does. All relationships take work. What I'm saying is, listen, if you don't have anybody to fellowship with, we just told you there's a fellowship at Sodaville Hall on Friday nights at 630. Come. They play games. They hang out. They do. But there's only a couple people. Well, if more come, there'll be more people. And if more come, there'll be more people. Right? And then eventually you'll have a fellowship. Right? I'm just saying... I'm not trying to pick on us. I'm trying to help us to realize it's our responsibility. It's not the pastor's responsibility. It's not Michael or Dave's responsibility. It's your responsibility. Amen? So quit blaming and start doing. All of us. I got tons of fellowship going on. But every day I choose to fellowship. You understand what I'm saying? It's our choice. We're called to do it. It's part of what keeps us. What happens is, if we're not doing, most of the time, we get critical of everybody else. But what we need to do is start doing. Then we got all of our time invested in doing instead of being critical of everybody that's not doing. Do you understand what I'm saying? Let's start doing. And these all go so seamlessly together. The last ingredient, and it's surely not the least important, is just love. It's the Greek word agape, which stands for unconditional love. All you parents, grandparents, uncles, aunts, you understand this. You love your children no matter what. Whether they're clean or dirty, tall or short, thin or fat, rebellious or honoring. You love them. It's a choice you make every day. And that's what we're called to do. See, the first, brotherly kindness, again, is about working to build relationships. But the last one is the most important one. It's the glue that holds it all together. That's why he says if you do all this stuff in 1 Corinthians 13, but you don't have agape, it's not going to work. If you're the best at the gifts, and you're generous beyond imagination, and you even give your body to be burnt, man, you just, whatever. But you don't have agape. Not going to work. It's the most important one. It simply means to love unconditionally 
See, without this ingredient, nothing else works. It's like trying to make biscuits without the lard or the butter. It doesn't stick together the way it needs to. Am I making sense? Colossians 3.14 says, But above all these things, put on or add love, which is the bond of perfection. I talked a minute ago about what I share with premarital counseling victims or <laughs> precipitants. I'm sorry. And I remember Eros, Eros, okay, the sexual attraction needs to be kept alive. Philadelphia, the communion, the fun and fellowship, okay, learning to enjoy being with each other. It takes effort, especially when you start to have kids. Because what happens is, as men and women, we start turning all of our affection and our attention towards the children, and we forget this and this. But if we keep this healthy and this healthy, this will work the way it should. If we don't, then what's happening is this will fall apart, this will be destroyed, and that will be affected in horrible ways. Am I making sense? That's why the Bible says, my wife is more important than my kids. That's what it tells me. I love her, and then I love my wife like Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. And if I do this right and this right, this will take care of itself. Because as I love my God with all my heart, mind, soul, and strength, and my neighbor, who first and foremost is my wife, my neighbor is myself, Right? then the natural outflow is to love everyone else I come in contact with. And my kids will see me walking it out in word and in deed. And they'll say, man, I want to be like dad. My daughters and my son have said, man, I see a relationship. I see a strength in Molly. I see how you guys interact, and it encourages us that we can have a thriving, loving relationship even 20 years down the road. Am I making sense? But what binds it all together is agape. See? Because if you have everything else, but you don't have this glue, what is the bottom line of agape? Let me read what I wrote in my quiet time. Brotherly kindness or Philadelphia speaks to communing, getting along, building relationship, hanging out, having fun, getting to know each other, and finding things in common. Agape is about choosing to love unconditionally, intentionally putting forth effort to care, irregardless of how things are going. All relationships have highs and lows, good and bad times. Agape is the glue that holds it all together. It's the commitment that I will love you no matter what. For better, for worse, for richer, for poor, till death do us part. There are a ton of relationships, me included, on my last one. That are good at the sexual thing, I'm being honest, but not good at all at the communion thing. They're not friends. Or maybe they're great friends, but they don't have the sexual thing between them like it should be. They don't have the attraction that should be there. And it does take work and effort. Or maybe they have the communion thing and even the sexual thing. But they don't have the commitment till death do us part. And so they're going along through life. And things get really tough. And they bail. They're good as long as it's good. But the agape is what holds us together irregardless of what's happening. Even when he looks ugly. Even when he's being a turkey. Because you trust that God's going to reach him and your commitment is to him as well as to them. Am I making sense? As brothers and sisters in the Lord, we have to determine that we're going to build relationships and it's all of your choice. But we also got to commit to it, better or worse, richer or poor, whether or not they snob you the first couple times, whether or not you feel welcome, that you're going to be part of this and you're going to move forward in it irregardless. Am I making sense? Amen. That's the glue that holds it together. 
And then what will happen is you're going to have relationships even in this body that are going great sometimes and not so great other times. But it's that commitment that keeps us through the bad. God's faithful. Let's be faithful to him. If we will do this, Joe, we'll never stumble. That's what it says. I love you guys. I appreciate you. And I want to encourage you. I hope you don't think I was trying to pick at you. I just love us all enough to bug us, me included. This is something I have to remind myself of regularly. I lose it sometimes, and I'm mean to her. But you know what? There's such a strong agape that she's not afraid to tell me what I need to hear and vice versa. And we make it through that valley and back up under the top because of the agape. Amen. Amen? Am I making sense? Father God, I'm worshiping you. Father God, maybe, whether this has been a challenging word to our hearts, Father God, I pray that you let it soak in, Father God, and speak to our hearts and help it to apply to us today, Father. Lord, we thank you for this time that we can come into your house and fellowship. And Lord God, keep us safe throughout the week and help us just to long for more of you. 